Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, welcome to Nebula 2. This is, this is, this is fun. I am in the process of building a small body electro acoustic fan fret beauty out of some of the sexiest wood I've ever seen. And today, well, today she's coming together. Today I'm going to, uh, I'm going to seal the inside of the instrument, I'm going to finalize the control system, I'm going to sort out fitting the top to the body, which is going to be fun because last time I used a Spanish neck joint, so I need to inlay the top over the fretboard, and well, other fun stuff will occur, but this episode was sponsored by Skillshare, I'll talk about that later, and well, here's how we got here. That is what I'm after. I can hear the chickens in the background. They're egging me on. <sighs> on with the build. Haha, <laughs> the chickens, they're egging me on. I've just realized what I said. <sighs> Burn it. Today, the fun begins. Ha <laughs> ha, yay! I have got to sort out this neck joint. You see how the end of the neck there is too high? I'm going to have to I'm gonna to have to remove some of that. The sides of the neck would normally be installed into a solid block of wood uh, on the, in, in the instrument. In this case, we've used a Spanish neck joint where the sides actually are inlaid into the top. Now, this is absolutely fine and valid. Uh, it's, it's a nightmare for the luthier who wants to come and do a neck reset, because that's basically impossible. But uh, it's a little bit flexible and I want to add just a little bit of extra strength by adding some wood on this side and that side that will then tie in the top, the back, the sides of the neck, etc., as would be a case with a normal neck joint. Part of the issue last week uh, was that I basically guessed the curves on the front and the back, and I don't want to guess anything. So, put the guitar away and pull out the plate that I used to create that curve. I'm gonna make a quick uh, curved template so that I can work out where exactly I need to cut the end of that neck so that the top is fully supported at the right height without guesswork. Now, I really like the look of this through here, and I think that losing that would be a shame.
With those in place, I need to start thinking about shellac. I mean, I think about shellac a lot. Every other evening or so, I have a dream about shellac. But uh, in this case, I want to use shellac to seal the inside of this entire guitar. And the reason I'm doing that is to slow down the moisture transfer. Uh, it's going to have a finish on the outside, uh, and it's relatively... I just, want to, I just want to avoid it moving around very, very much. That bird is very loud. I did stop and have a think about the, with the grain direction of those two pieces. To be frank, if I had the same piece of wood going along the length of the neck, I think it might be better. Uh, it would be, the way, the way wood dries is it shrinks more along its length than it does in any other dimension. And I, worry about these two pieces shrinking or expanding too much. Now, I'm one, minimizing that by the shellac anyway, and two, I was considering this and thought, hey, violins have a spruce sound post between the, 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 the top and the back and the bass bar and all that jazz, and I think, I think it'll be okay. Anyhow, onwards. Nice. So it took me an evening to get to the point where I was happy with this, and uh, it's, yeah, it's not the easiest thing applying shellac inside of all of these nooks and crannies, but, but anyway, uh, if I wanted easy, I would not be building guitars. I need to fit the top over this. I also just wanted to show you just how flexible this is. There is movement and flex. Uh, that is going to be fixed entirely once I turn it into a box. Uh, if it isn't, and this is no less stable than a normal acoustic style neck joint, arguably, maybe 5% less stable. Uh, however, once the top is on, I do have a final option of putting a brace in between the tail stock and the, and the neck here um, after the fact. But I don't think I'm going to need it. Let's see how much the neck is wobbling there. Uh, and that's essentially because I don't have a huge chunk of wood under there. I'm used to how over-engineered an electric guitar is. And uh, this is something to bear in mind. We can get away with a lot more with electric instruments than we currently do. So the question is, how do I transfer this multi-angled strange shape onto the top so that I can cut it out absolutely perfectly without any gaps or issues. And uh, it's actually a lot easier than you would think. Some paper, a pencil, and some masking tape. Cool. 
Et voilà. So we're lined up with the center line through the hole here, lined up with the center line there, and I have all the dimensions here. Measure, measure, cut. That's it, I suppose. I have done this at least dozens of times, probably more. I, I, I love through necks and this is how you would get a figure top on a through neck instrument. The thing is, this is the first time I've ever done it using this method. I always used to sit there with a ruler and measure and measure and measure and write down numbers and all of that jazz and you know that I suck at that. Last night, after all the children were all asleep and I'd run out of gumption. I am currently working my way through the Great Guitar Build-Off playlist on uh, the Crimson Guitars YouTube channel. And uh, well, there's nearly 200 videos there so far, and I probably watched 30 of them yesterday, uh, a lot of them last night. And uh, in the end, I, I needed to stop thinking about guitar building. But what actually happened was I started thinking about my guitar building, and I had a realization. And this is what happened from there. Something that I learned from one of the podcasts I listened to, and unfortunately I can't remember which one, but uh, the guy, I think actually it was the guy who wrote the book, The 4-Hour Workweek, and he wrote another book, and when he was writing, when he sat down to write the book, he was trying to figure out how he's going to do it. And writing books is not easy. It's not easy at all. Uh, and he said to himself, what would this look like? if it was easy. And I've been applying that to my life in every single facet of my life. And quite frankly, that's what I did last night. I sat down, I said, what would working this shape out look like if it was easy? And just into my head came the idea. Three pieces of paper and some masking tape. You can't get much easier than that. Spaghetti noodle doodle do. It's time to be quiet, I'm filming. Got me? Yeah, you got me. You're a cute ass chicken, aren't you? So are you. That was by way of me procrastinating. <sighs> Should we see if this fits or not? I mean, it's slightly undersized. It should be slightly undersized. Well, I hesitate to use the word perfect, normally. Center line, center line. But once I've got that tidied up with the file, I think we're gonna be there.
I don't think I've ever done a better job of this. Oh, crikey. That, that is... I'm done now. I'm going to go and have a celebratory coffee and you can't stop me. I, I urge you to go and do the same. I don't care if it's 2 a.m. when you currently are watching this. I don't say this lightly. You can even have decaf if you like. Um, all hyperbole, yeah. Uh, notwithstanding, seriously, that could have gone horrifically wrong. Uh, but taking this sort of job slow and careful and not using a Japanese saw rasp, for example, just cut as close to your line as possible with a saw and then very gently with a, a fine file. And I, I just clipped out the corners with a, with a sharp chisel. Yes. It says a lot that I need a coffee to, to still my beating heart now. I said cup of coffee, I meant mug and I meant two, but you know, we, we, we're all right. We, we understand each other. Copacetic. So. We are coming. Everything lines up absolutely perfectly except for a few areas around here where we are oversized, which is uh, exactly what I thought it would be. So, at this stage, what I need to do is I want to seal the inside of this. I want to add some shielding paint to the back behind where the electronics is gonna go and to the front. I want to figure out exactly where the control is gonna be. Specifications. This is gonna be a fun control though, I tell you. Let's remove some waste. Of 
course we chipped out a little piece in this corner. This is not friendly wood. Uh, doesn't make a difference though, we are going to be replacing a few spots like that around the whole guitar. So uh, yeah, fun times. Now. do want to I do want to shellac the inside of this but I also need to avoid where I'm going to be gluing so uh, and there you go that gives me an idea of where to avoid now on with the shellacking shellacker baby So the one issue I have with the Alkaline Professional wood glue is the applicator is just a little bit too generous, shall we say. I think I filled that up too much. There we go. Oh, you fool. Why do you people even watch me? I, 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 I really am just... Useless. Okay. All right. Come on. I thought I was being so clever. The first time I did this, I tried to suck the glue up without taking the applicator, the thing out, and it took somebody commenting on the video to make me realise how stupid I was. Uh, anyway, there we go. I'm going to put some music on and we are going to
Just adding the glue has added, has made that too tight. Okay. All right, centre line is in place. That's worked. Uh, those two in first, and then I've compressed the, the back towards the top, which is pushing it towards the fretboard. Do you know how difficult it is to talk to you guys? Yeah, I thought so. While listening to Stabbing Westward. <laughs> Been a while since I listened to these guys. Like, yeah. Okay, there's no real support there, so let's see what happens here. Good, that looks good. Okay, that's that. That's that. Alrighty. So I probably put a little bit too little glue uh, on the second stage. Um, I wanted a bit more squeeze out than that, but that worked out in the end. I put it in, that's fine. Uh, this central section where the inner rib goes in, that was clamped just through the pressure of having the curve, etc. but I'll put that there just to be sure. The last thing I want is buzzing or anything like that. But, well, I'm quite happy. Uh, I'm going to go and take a break and we'll be back to declam soon. Before we get to the big kahuna, uh, I told you earlier that this video was sponsored by Skillshare and you know that I'm a fan of learning, you know that I'm a fan of Skillshare in particular. They are a fantastic purveyor of online classes in myriad subjects, many of which interest me from video editing to photo editing to uh, online business to accountancy and everything in between. Recently I checked out a class by Dan Mace, Filmmaking for All, Tell Your Story Through Video which is obviously applicable to me, but also to any one of you who has entered into the Great Guitar Build-Off. And there are nearly 400 of you at this particular point. Please check out Skillshare. Uh, the first thousand people to click the link below get a free premium membership trial. And it's absolutely well worth checking out. Now, on with the show. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. It's almost like a professional right now. I like it. Anyhow, let us unclamp. Unclamp, unclamp. This is our onboarding process. 
Okay, stop it. It's been a long day. I've done this before. It's still so exciting. There is no movement whatsoever. We have, we've got a guitar people. We've got a guitar people. Alrighty, okay, stop clapping near the microphone, Ben. This is a good moment. I've been looking forward to this moment. Uh, obviously, my string is going to be used to pull my control pot assembly through this sound hole here and up into there. There's going to be an interesting uh, process to get it in position. Uh, it's going to be cool, though, if it goes well. If it doesn't, it's going to be painful but we'll see. Uh, but what we have here is not a failure to communicate. What we have here is Nebula 2 and she's coming together. Thank you for watching. Please click like, subscribe, hit that notification button. Some people have uh, told me in the live streams that I do that they aren't getting notifications uh, and that's because you've probably hit the bell icon but only personalized notifications rather than all. Uh, if you want to get notifications that I put something out, click that button. Uh, if not, I completely understand. <sighs> Next week, this guitar is going to be fully sanded. I am going to start playing with stain. And, well, we've got to turn it into a nebula now, don't we? I'll leave it at that. Have a good weekend. See you guys soon. Goodbye.